Hi, I'm Greg Dell with Dell Disability Lawyers, joined by attorney Stephen Jessup. And Stephen, we're going to discuss one of your resolved cases against the Guardian Insurance Company. Um, it was a tremendous victory for you and uh, looking forward to hearing more about this particular one. And then we'll get into the issues that you had to overcome and provide some tips for people so that they could learn some things that they could do in their own appeal or help them to avoid a claim denial by the Guardian. So give us the background of this case to start. Yeah, so our, our client, she very young, you know, only at 40 years old. She was a project manager, manager and director um, of a large portion of a cancer research facility. Um, she was out on disability due to fibromyalgia. She had had cervical neck surgery, back issues, uh, and a handful of autoimmune conditions uh, that were realistically affecting her, you know, in, in real severe ways. Um, Guardian approved her claim. You know, her policy is a pure own occupation policy, so it's taking a look at her occupational duties. Uh, they approved her claim. She was on claim for roughly just under two years when her doctor, you know, unwittingly filled out a form that basically Guardian used to say, oh, your doctor says you can return to full-time sedentary work, uh, and because of that, we're going to deny your case. So that's kind of the, the rough background of but, how I met her. Um, let's go right into the guts of this. <laughs> this form that her own doctor said she could do full-time sedentary work, what, what, what do you do? Why were you, how were you able to overcome that? Well, you know, part of the issue is, is, and we've talked about a lot, these forms don't give doctors a lot of leeway, room to fill. Uh, this particular form had it where the lowest level of physical ability for restrictions, the most severe, were sedentary, right? So it didn't give the opportunity to really expand upon it. And you know, to the doctor's credit, after the claim was denied and prior to, to, to the, uh, the client contacting us, um, he had written a letter on her behalf that basically said, you know, the form uh, was very basic, generic, it didn't give room to elaborate or really discuss the multitude of medical conditions that she has. Uh, so he did try to rectify the situation, but Guardian's position was, it's too late, it's denied, you can appeal. But it sounds like the form was a trap and mm -hmm. it was designed yeah. to set her up for denial. Yeah, 100%. A tip here, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're representing the client, what, how would you have handled this situation? Well, you know, normally if we see the form before it goes off, there's an immediate call to the doctor's office. Hey, I saw this, just want some clarification. Um, you know, and it's one of those things you're discussing with the doctor and letting them know, and, and also letting doctors know that they're allowed to elaborate right. uh, outside of that. They don't have to go by these just, you know, boxes that the, the insurance company gives them. Um, I think a lot of times with the doctors, you know, whether they're in a rush or, or right. you know, whatever it is, is that they're just not realizing what the repercussions are. I mean, if you think about it, if there's something that says, you know, your patient can't lift up more than 10 pounds, uh, you know, and, and these other, it's very severe restrictions, but the doctors don't realize that the insurance company is just trying to use that as a basis uh, to deny the disability claim. A lot of times, I, I can assure you at this point, now that she's back on claim, uh, he's very cognizant of that fact and it's a little different. Right. Okay. So she basically got denied because they took advantage of their own form to say your doctor, your doctor said you can do sedentary work. So how did, what else did you do? What made this more difficult. You know, we, the, we had something like we've discussed some of the high red flags. She's young, she's only 40, has a, a large benefit amount, an own occupation policy. So Guardian's taking a look at, you know, a large amount of financial liability for the next 25, you know, 27 years. So, you know, playing the ERISA game and understanding, you know, that their rights in court and all that type of stuff, they're, they're looking to deny the case, find some reason to deny it. And the doctor saying that you can work, even if it was in mistake, is, is a reason to at least start the denial. So they denied her in April uh, of 2020. She didn't contact our, I'm sorry, April of 2021. She didn't contact our office till November. So we were very, very much up against the deadline to file the appeal. What uh, is the deadline for uh, people who are watching? 180 days from the date of the denial. A guardian did give us a limited amount of, uh, for an extension, um, but we had to work very, very quickly on this case because it was twofold. One, we're gonna deal with this idea of, you know, the physical requirements of her job. And a lot of the, and her policy with Guardian, just like 
all the employer provided policies. Her occupation is defined uh, to mean how it's performed in the national economy, not how she did it for her employer or in her specific location, but how this general generic way it's done in the national economy. And what was her job title? She was a project manager. Right, so it's one of I those mean, job that titles. Is so incredibly it, broad. of what, right? Exactly. It's like we got to ha give you a title, but you have a boatload of responsibilities it's, underneath this. You could be a project manager mm -hmm. in a architectural firm, and you could be a project manager in a heavy-duty construction it's, company. It's totally, all different. Totally different. All responsibilities. Different. All different. So they took the generic, you know, explanation of what that is, and they said it's sedentary in the national economy. Even though the policy says disabilities, you know, you can't perform with reasonable continuity uh, the material substantial acts of the occupation. So that's something we see a lot. So, you know, we are, I already know going into it, I'm going to argue, well, the ability to do sedentary work, to, you know, sit at a desk, lift 10 pounds, doesn't mean you can actually do those substantial and material duties. Um, but I always like to address this low and co lowest common denominator if they want to go there. So we were able to get her set up for a functional capacity evaluation. Big concern being is, is it's so many months after the fact, it's very common for an insurance company to say, well, that's how she was in November, but that's not how she was when we denied her back in April. So right. it's not time sensitive. So that was a hurdle. Um, you know, fortunately, the, the uh, functional capacity evaluation did come back that she had sedentary abilities, but only on a part-time basis, right? And the validity testing, everything was good there. So, you know, we addressed that aspect of it. But given the nature of her work for this Cancer Research Institute, very cognitively demanding. Um, so in speaking with her and, and really kind of delving into a lot of the issues that she's having, cognitively very much so. Much, I mean, she's like, my memory, I can't remember stuff. I'm forgetting stupid small details. So we're able to arrange for also neuropsychological testing to, to verify the cognitive aspects, to really show where those restrictions may lay. And, Unfortunately for her, there were some very severe, you know, um, impairments with regards to memory and, and processing and, and various things. So we had both the physical basis to say she can't work and a cognitive basis. And then at that point, going getting back to her doctor, we took both of those tests, the results. We drafted our own questionnaire, attending physician statement for the doctor, and he was more than willing to, you know, really, really go and give his opinion. And I had reminded him too, and I, you know, I always like to tell uh, clients, doctors, is when they're completing this that you're never going to be deposed by the insurance company. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be allowed to testify in trial. The only thing a court may ever consider are your written records and written opinions. Have at it. You're never going to have to worry about a defense attorney right. trying to discredit you. Um, so we did all that. And then the last component, because like you said, project manager, it's very generic. We did do an occupational, our own vocational analysis. Um, with her expanded uh, job description, we sent it to our own expert along with you know, the medicals and the functional capacity testing and neuropsychological testing so we could hit as much as we possibly could uh, you know, to show that she doesn't have this capability for work. Uh, and then you know, the last component and part of it was uh, a couple weeks after they denied her case, she was awarded Social Security Disability. Um, you know, and to her credit, um, where most people are like, well, you've denied me, I'm not giving you your money back. She repaid her overpayment. You know, she was like, that's the duty under the policy. I did that. Uh, and thankfully, the Social Security Administration can be very slow. We were able to get the claim file in time to submit with the appeal uh, as well. So, you know, it was something I believe was hit from every angle. And it also wanted to draft it and, and present information in such a way that knowing Guardian's still going to try to find ways to maybe get her off claim at some point, given her age and the level of restrictions, I wanted to set the claim up for long-term success uh, moving forward. It's, it's a tremendous amount of work that you did on this file, and yet Guardian sends this letter when they deny the claimant to say, you have the right to appeal and just go ahead and tell us why you disagree. Yet I'm sit you know, sitting here listening to you for the last five minutes talk about everything you did, which took a significant amount of time and it's it's like an impossible burden for anyone to be able to handle on their own so um, great job and now moving forward what do you do for this particular claimant to help her protect her benefits in the future you know, the, the monthly claims handling so uh, at this point there's been one additional request for information updates claim forms from her um, you know, medical records, stuff like that. Basically, we're the liaison to her. Uh, Guardian has been relatively quiet since, quiet since her claim was approved, but it's been a short amount of time. I do expect that that is going to pick up again here soon. 
Um, so we're just monitoring, you know, getting the updated medicals. She treats with a lot of doctors, so there is a lot to have to kind of coordinate and keep up with. Um, and, and, you know, even in reviewing her records, uh, I've seen some things where t a couple of her doctors were in conflict on certain items. And, you know, I've pointed out, I'm like, hey, this doctor is saying X, Y, and Z with respect to this aspect, and they're in conflict. You may want to speak to your doctors about what's going on here. So it's really just making sure the documentation is as tight as it possibly can be. So, you know, Guardian can't send me a two page denial letter where there's only, a, you know, four sentences that are of any pertinence. The rest is policy language. So just making sure that they're going to, you know, leave her alone as much as possible. Well, congrats again. Um, if you're someone out there who has a Guardian long-term disability insurance policy, feel free to reach out to Steven, myself, any of the long-term disability lawyers on our team. We're available to help you no matter where you live in the country and we'll always provide you with an initial free phone consultation. Hi, I'm Gregory Dell, the managing attorney of Dell Disability Lawyers, and I hope you find the video you just watched helpful. We put these videos out all of the time and we'd love if you would subscribe to our YouTube channel. Beyond our videos on our YouTube channel, we also have lots of information available on our website at diattorney.com and we encourage you to come to our website. The goal is, is that we want you to be educated about the disability insurance process and when you get to our website, you'll see that we have information all about your specific disability insurance company, your occupation, and your medical condition. And we've designed our website such that you can easily search our website to find things that you may specifically be looking for. Now at our website, we have thousands and thousands of pages of information, hundreds of videos that you can search, plus we're building a section of reviews of all the disability insurance companies, and we have the Ask Our Lawyer section where you can go ahead and ask us any questions that you may have. Now we realize that you may not need us right now, but you may need us in the future to help you with your disability claim and we think one of the best ways to keep in touch is by clicking the button below and subscribing to our channel. And most importantly, again, no matter where you live in the country, we're always available. Just go ahead and give us a call. We're happy to discuss your claim and let you know immediately if we can help you.